In order to study the universe and in order to understand how things work in the universe, we obviously also have to study the actual particles everything is made out of. The Lego blocks of the universe, if you will. And to do this, the scientists usually use particle accelerators and try to collide various smaller particles in order to create these huge showers of subatomic particles, which then can be studied mathematically in order to determine what's actually happening here. So kind of like taking a bunch of Legos, smacking them together, just to see what pieces fly out and to see what's all of this made out of. And that's of course how the scientists eventually realize that all of the protons and all of the neutrons are made out of even smaller stuff. Things we refer to as quarks, with pretty much all of the science textbooks today showing protons as this. Two up quarks, one down quark, a bunch of squiggly lines, known as gluons between them, surrounded by a shell that represents an electron. And ironically, very recently, we've talked about one of the major discoveries in regards to this structure that actually helps us understand what's going on inside protons and neutrons a little bit better. With the most recent visualization of all of this showing us that the proton probably looks like this. These unusual white formations, these clouds, these are gluons. That's where most of the mass of the proton is. If you were to somehow see through this, and if you were to remove these gluons, you would then start seeing some of the quarks, with the quarks essentially appearing this way. This particular simulation from the Jefferson lab is right now the best simulation slash visualization that the scientists currently have for what they believe happens inside protons, neutrons and other subatomic particles. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this very recent discovery that suggests that this actually might be kind of incorrect, or at least missing something on the inside. There might be a major part that's not showing here. A part that was only recently discovered by using analysis using very complex machine learning. And all this is based on a study that was only released yesterday, from when I'm making this video, that kind of shows us that there is very strong evidence for the existence of what's known as the charm quark inside a typical proton. And if correct, that's a huge discovery. A tremendous discovery. It's a discovery that will require rewriting a lot of textbooks out there. But as always, baby steps. So as I mentioned in that previous video that you should probably check out if you'd like to learn more about protons, neutrons and quarks, this by itself is already incomplete. The squiggly lines here that represent gluons that connect quarks in reality are the major part of the proton. So these quarks that you see interacting with one another, they only represent like 1% of everything, all of the energy inside a typical proton. 99% are gluons. With these two types of quarks, up quarks and down quarks, forming the rest. And if we were to take a look at all of the known subatomic particles that basically make up the matter as we know it, it would sort of look like this. And here as you can see there are six major quarks. The stuff that's familiar to us is mostly made out of up and down quarks surrounded by the electrons. But also naturally gluons play a really big role in all of this as well. And in the last few years, various experiments such as from the iconic CERN, the largest particle accelerator we have right now, the scientists were able to accidentally create some additional particles, sometimes even containing four quarks, with many of them being made out of strange quarks, charm quarks, or essentially quarks that are not in the same generation as the quarks that make up most of the matter. Now like many times in science, the names here are unfortunate. Naming them up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom doesn't really explain anything about them and actually confuses a lot of people trying to study them. So instead, modern scientists usually just use the first letter. So for example, C, S, T, B, U and D. And so once again, U and D quarks are the most important ones because pretty much everything that we're familiar with and all of the stable matter around us, all of this is made out of U and D quarks, electrons and gluons. Whereas for example, S and C quarks can only really exist for a tiny fraction of a second. And even if they do create some kind of a subatomic particle by combining together, it will never exist longer than one second. At least in the conditions in the modern universe. Today the scientists believe that maybe in the first few moments of the universe, some of these components could have been actually uh, possible and might have even created some really exotic matter. But in modern universe, in these conditions, creating some kind of exotic particle that's stable out of these unusual subatomic particles would actually be kind of impossible. And so all of this is really more of a scientific curiosity. And so these strange and charm quarks or S and C quarks were never really used in anything other than theoretical physics. But I guess that's maybe until now. And it's based on something that the scientists originally proposed a few decades ago. So initially, back in the 60s, the first particle accelerator experiments 
finally revealed that there are smaller particles inside protons, and pretty much most of the papers proposed protons and neutrons to be made out of these three quarks. This was eventually proven through thousands and thousands of experiments in various particle accelerators on the planet. But these were never 100% accurate, and there was always a little bit of a discrepancy here and there. That's of course just based on the nature of these experiments, because here we're talking about super tiny particles and collisions that are always slightly different. As a matter of fact, this image from CERN even sort of shows us that sometimes even other quarks could be detected in various collisions, even though theoretically we don't really expect to find them. Nevertheless, the modern image of a proton has always been shown as this. We have three major quarks, and potentially some other subatomic particles produced here and there, but only temporarily. With once again the majority of stuff being gluons. And all this is of course because in these tiny tiny particles, it's really the quantum mechanics that governs everything. Here particles appear and disappear all the time, and the structure itself is entirely governed by the probability and by quantum mechanics. And so the production of other matter and antimatter particles can actually happen inside the proton. But at least one paper from the 80s has already suggested that there might be a permanent member that's present along with the up and down quarks. Or in other words, that the proton might contain not three, but even five different quarks, with charm and anti-charm being the additional members. Back then this was highly debated, but no conclusive evidence has ever been found. And really mostly because of these very powerful collisions, with all of this energy, producing all kinds of quarks in the process. And so sometimes it's kind of difficult to separate minute details. But the recent analysis did something a little bit different. They actually combined the results from thousands of different experiments, in the process identifying that there was a slight discrepancy of about 0.5% that added a little bit of momentum to the proton, with this extra momentum coming from something else. And this is of course not the first time something unusual was discovered in these particle accelerators that could not be explained right away. There's actually another video that was released a few months ago that you can find in the description that talks about some of these discoveries. But this time is different because the scientists might have discovered what's happening. And as I mentioned before, they used machine learning for this. They essentially used the model to try to come up with various hypothetical scenarios that could explain some of these observations. In this case, the use of machine learning was particularly interesting because it might have avoided certain biases that physicists tend to have, or it might have even helped them come up with solutions that nobody would be able to come up with. And they then compared some of their models to the results from over 500,000 different collisions from various particle accelerators that ran experiments in the last few decades. In the process of discovering that just having three quarks would match these results with only 0.3% accuracy. But by introducing charm and anti-charm quark, which exists somewhere in the proton on a more prominent basis, all of this suddenly made so much more sense. Although at the moment this has only been proven with what's known as 3 sigma level. Basically it's an interesting discovery, but it's definitely not a concrete proof and not an official discovery just yet. Nevertheless, a really intriguing proposition. And of course, if correct, it would suggest that a typical proton is actually what's known as a pentaquark, something we've discussed a few years ago, and something that was always believed to be a kind of exotic particle. But maybe it's not. Maybe it's a lot more common than we actually think. And maybe the structure of the proton that we already thought was pretty complicated has more quarks on the inside, and thus way more complexity. But unfortunately, at the moment, this is all only based on statistical analysis. It's not an actual detection, and it hasn't really been officially verified by anyone else. But a super exciting first proposition nevertheless. And so whether the scientists in this case are correct or not, only time will tell. But does this actually change anything we know about protons in terms of, for example, practical use, or in terms of what we detect from around the universe? Well, at the moment, the only possible detection we might have that could have slight differences in what we're seeing is from the idea we refer to as the cosmic showers. When very powerful cosmic rays from outside of the galaxy, very often from various blazers and very powerful black holes, strike the upper atmosphere and by colliding with various protons and neutrons, end up producing a kind of a shower of subatomic particles. Now because they do actually collide with protons, if those protons contain charm quarks, what we observe on the planet could be a little bit different and might end up in the production of certain subatomic particles we don't expect. Something that could be confirmed with one of many neutrino detectors located on the planet. Although in reality, it's really hard to tell right now what any of this leads to and what potential discoveries the scientists will be making if this is actually correct. 
Still, a pretty exciting discovery, something that might require future science books to be rewritten, and I guess more importantly, an additional level of complexity to the already ridiculously complex proton and neutron that has so much stuff going on inside of it, even though most school textbooks usually kind of will leave it at that. But once more discoveries are made about this, and once the scientists either confirm or somehow disprove this, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. For now, check out that previous video that actually explains the structure of the proton in a little bit more detail and talks about the idea of mass and how absolutely mind-blowing this particular concept is. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.